please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the 2019 physics questionnaire of the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships for undergraduate students. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 3. An object of mass m is moving with a speed v on a frictionless plane as shown in figure 3. The object reaches at the end of the plane, x equals 0 and y equals h, at time equals 0, and jumps into the air. There is a slope in the positive x region as shown in figure 3. The acceleration of gravity is denoted as lowercase g. The first two problems ask us to find the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the object at time t, which is greater than 0, when the object is in the air. To solve this problem, let us recall some ideas from kinematics. First, are the definitions of displacement, velocity, and acceleration if the motion is one-dimensional. If the displacement is given by the function x of t, then the velocity is defined as the derivative of x with respect to t. And likewise, acceleration is defined as a derivative of v with respect to t, which means that it is also equal to the second derivative of x with respect to t. In the case of uniform acceleration, we set the acceleration to some constant a. And thus, from this equation here, or rather from this equation here, we get this equation, dv dt equals a. If we integrate this equation on both sides from time equals 0 to time equals t, we obtain this equation. This side is the integral of this side. And this side is the integral of this side, from time equals 0 to time equals t. And, and now we can replace this v of t with its definition from here, which is dx dt. And we just move this to the other side. Now we can do another integration. The integral of this side, from time equals 0 to time equals t, is this. The integral of the side from time equals 0 to time equals t is this. And now, let us also remember that when we have a projectile motion, which is a motion in two dimensions, we can consider the motion to be separate in the x-axis and in the y-axis. In other words, we can think of the motion as a 1D motion in the x-direction and a 1D motion in the y-direction so that they can be analyzed separately. For the first problem, we need to find the x-coordinate of the object when it is in the air. In other words, when it has gone past this corner here. At the beginning, the object is moving, and then when it reaches this corner, it is in the air, following a trajectory. Because we are interested in the x-coordinate of the object during this trajectory, we are actually interested in the displacement along the x-axis. And therefore, we can use this from the uniformly accelerated motion equations. That is because the acceleration in this case is uniform at zero because no force is acting along the x-axis. If we substitute the acceleration of zero into our equation, we obtain this. We are left with this bit. And we further substitute what we already know. From the problem, we know that at time zero, the object is at x equals zero. And so x of zero is zero because the object is here. And we also know from the problem that the speed along the x direction is v at time zero. That is because this is a frictionless plane and it's been moving at the same speed v right until it reaches this point. And therefore, its speed along the x axis at time zero, that is v of x, vx of zero, equals v. 
and we replace this with this, we replace this with this, we obtain this. In problem two, we are interested in the y coordinate. And because we can decompose the motion into a 1D motion in the x direction and another 1D motion in the y direction, we can analyze the coordinate in the y direction by just looking at what happens in the y axis. In this case, gravity is acting on the object along the y direction, and the acceleration due to gravity is given by negative g. The negative sign indicates that the gravity is pulling it downwards to the negative y axis. But this is very similar to the previous problem, and so we can also use the same displacement formula that we have here. In this case, let's replace the x with y. And that's what we did here. At the same time, we also replaced the acceleration with the acceleration due to gravity, negative g. And from the problem, we know that at time zero, the value of the y coordinate is h, and therefore y of zero is h. The value of the y component of the speed or velocity is also zero. Because at this point, at time zero, the, the object is only moving along the x-axis, and there is no y component. And if we replace this with this, and this with this, we obtain this expression for the y-coordinate. Questions 3 and 4 are related, so let us answer them together. If v is larger than a speed v sub c, the object does not hit the slope and directly drops on the horizontal plane at y equals 0. Find the expression of v sub c. If v is less than v sub c, the object hits the slope. Find the x-coordinate of the impact point. For problem 3, we need to find the minimum value of the speed v sub c such that if it is moving at v sub c here, it will overshoot the slope. And because v sub c is a minimum value of that speed, we also have the minimum overshoot, which is at the very edge of this slope. And that means that the trajectory of the object this is the trajectory of the object, it must intersect the slope at this very point at the edge. That means that the x-coordinate of the trajectory must be equal to the x-coordinate of the slope, and the y-coordinate of the trajectory must be equal to the y-coordinate of the slope. Let us now think about the slope. The x-coordinate of the slope here can be obtained by this relationship. This is easily seen from the trigonometric identities, or rather the trigonometric relationships. y sub e, or the y coordinate of the slope here, is just zero. On the other hand, x sub p has already been obtained from problem 3, 1, and that is given by this. In this case, we replace v with v sub c because the conditions that we are looking at is when the speed is v sub c. And that will give us a landing here at the edge of the slope. y sub p has also been obtained from the previous problem, 3, 2, and that is this. If we combine these two, if we eliminate t because we are only interested in the relationship between y and x, we just replace the t here with x sub p over v sub c, and this is what we obtain. Now, we can apply these relationships here. The y of the trajectory and the y of the slope are equal. The y of the slope, y sub e, is 0. The y of the trajectory is this. However, x sub p in the trajectory 
is also equal to the x sub e of the slope. And that's why we replaced x sub e here with x sub e. And that gave us this relationship. Finally, we do some algebra to obtain this. And finally, this. For problem 4, we consider the case when v is less than v sub c that was obtained in the previous question. In this case, we're interested in finding the x coordinate at which the trajectory intersects the slope. To do this, we must assert again that the trajectory must intersect the ramp at x, r, y, r. And suppose that this is the intersection. Now, to find this, we need to find the equation of this ramp and the equation of the trajectory. The equation of the ramp is a, is a line, and that is given by this. This is easy to find because we have the y-intercept h, and we know that the slope of this is just the tangent, or rather the negative tangent, of theta. For the equation of the trajectory, we already obtained this in the previous problem, and that is this equation here. Now, we just need to find the intersection by solving these two equations. And what we did here is we replaced the y sub p's with y sub r. So y sub p is equal to this expression. That is what we got here. And this is just brought here while replacing x sub p with x sub r. Further manipulation of this relationship allows us to obtain this final expression here, which is the x coordinate at the impact point. If you learned something new today, Please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!